For the movement associated with William F. Albright and also known as Biblical Archaeology, see Biblical Archaeology School. For the interpretation of biblical archaeology in relation to biblical historicity, see Historicity of the Bible and List of Artifacts in Biblical Archaeology. For the magazine, see Biblical Archaeology Review. Biblical archaeology involves the recovery and scientific investigation of the material remains of past cultures that can illuminate the periods and descriptions in the Bible, be they from the Old Testament Tanakh or from the New Testament, as well as the history and cosmogony of the Judeo Christian religions. The principal location of interest is what is known in the relevant religions as the Holy Land, which from a Western perspective is also called the Middle East. In contrast, the archaeology of the ancient Middle East simply deals with the ancient Near East, or Middle East, without giving any especial consideration to whether its discoveries have any relationship with the Bible. The scientific techniques used are the same as those used in general archaeology, such as excavation and radiocarbon dating. Archaeology In order to understand the significance of biblical archaeology it is first necessary to understand two basic concepts, archaeology as a scientific framework and the Bible as an object for research. Archaeology as a science, not in the Aristotelian sense of cognitio certa per causas but in the modern sense of systematic knowledge. Vicente Villar expands on this point by stating that archaeology is both art and science, as an art it searches for the material remains of ancient civilizations and tries to reconstruct, as far as possible, the environment and the organizations of one or many historical epochs, as a relatively recent modern science, and as Benish has said, it is a science that is barely 200 years old but that has, however, completely changed our ideas about the past. It might be thought that archaeology would have to disregard the information contained within religions and and many philosophical systems. However, apart from the great deal of factual material that they provide such as places of worship, holy objects and other scientifically observable things, there are other aspects that are equally important for scientific archaeological investigation such as religious texts, rites, customs and traditions. Myths are commonly used by archaeologists and historians as clues to events or places that have become hidden in the background, a process that Rudolf Bultmann calls demythification", the most notable example being Homer's poems and the mythical city of Troy. This contemporary perception of the myth, mainly developed by Boltman, has encouraged scientists such as archaeologists to examine the areas indicated by the biblical tales. Biblical archaeology is the discipline occupied with the scientific investigation and recovery of the material remains of past cultures that can illuminate the times and descriptions of the Bible, a broad swath of time between 2000 BC and 100 AD. Other authors prefer to talk about the archaeology of Palestine and to define the relevant territories as those to the east and west of the River Jordan. This indicates that biblical archaeology or that of Palestine is circumscribed by the territories that were the backdrop to the biblical stories. The raison d'etre of biblical archaeology derives from the fact that it allows an understanding of the peoples that inhabited the Holy Land. It allows an understanding of their history, culture, identity and movements. This makes it possible to know the exact location of the stories and compare them with fact. Regarding this, Caswalder has noted that previously the American and Israeli school of biblical archaeology saw archaeology as proof of the veracity of the biblical stories, as can be seen in the work of authors of the stature of William F. Albright, G. Ernest Wright and Yigal Yadin. However, today archaeologists are not trying to prove that the stories in the Bible are true, they are trying to discover the historical world upon which the books of the Bible drew and from which they derive their meaning. Using this approach, introduced by P. Caswalder, it is possible to shed light on the following, according to the classification presented by the Catalan papyrologist Joan Maria Vernet. Biblical archaeology can shed light on the knowledge that we have regarding certain historical data described in the biblical stories such as governments, people, battles and cities. It allows us to provide some specific details reflected in the books of the Bible for example the Siloam Tunnel, the Pool of Bethesda, Calvary and others that effectively relate to those described in the biblical stories. Biblical archaeology lends fundamental support to exegetical studies. <laughs> Location Topic. 
The geographical area that circumscribes the area of interest for biblical archaeology is obviously the biblical lands, also known as the Holy Land. There are many points of view regarding the exact extent of this area, however, biblical archaeology specifically concentrates on the land of Israel, Palestine and Jordan, the area called the Southern Levant. Many researchers are also interested in other areas that are mentioned in the biblical tales and which have a great importance for their connecting thread, Egypt, Syria and Mesopotamia which are of interest to scientists interested in the Tanakh. Asia Minor, Macedonia, Greece and Rome have greater connections with the stories from the New Testament. Topic. Dates Topic. In the same way that the spatial criteria vary according to the various points of view of the different researchers, there are also a variety of dates that are of interest. Caswalder comments that the period is understood to run from the 9th millennium BC, which corresponds to the earliest dated Neolithic remains of Jericho, to 700 AD, which marks the first invasions by Muslim armies. This time period is considered by some authorities to be too wide and controversial. A second narrower period has been described that is more closely defined by the biblical stories, from the Middle Bronze Age, that is from 2000 BC, which according to biblical chronology corresponds with the time of the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac and Jacob until the end of the first century AD, with the death of the last apostle John the Evangelist and the end of the so-called Apostolic Church. The term apostolic church is taken to mean the historical period when Jesus's apostles were alive, including Paul of Tarsus. This period ends with the death of John the Evangelist. The exact date of his death is not known, but it is presumed to be around 110 AD. However, some scholars consider that the authors of the fourth gospel and the book of Revelation may have been John's disciples. Topic: <laughs> Periods in biblical archaeology. Topic. The following list of periods for Syro-Palestinian archaeology is based on the table provided in Biblical Archaeology, a very short introduction, pp. 33-34 up to the end of the Iron Age, and from the definitions provided by the Mercer Dictionary of the Bible, p. 55, for later periods. Neolithic period, c. 8500-4300 BC Pre-Pottery Neolithic PPN equals c. 8500-6000 BC Pre-Pottery Neolithic A PPNA equals C 8500-7500 BC Pre-Pottery Neolithic B PPNB equals 7500-6000 BC Pottery Neolithic 6000-4300 BC Pottery Neolithic A PNA equals 6000-5000 BC Pottery Neolithic B PNB equals 5000-4300 BC Chalcolithic period 4300-3300 BC Bronze Age 3300-1200 BC Early Bronze Eb Age equals 3300-2300 BC Early Bronze I Eb I equals 3300-3050 BC Early Bronze E Early Bronze 3 Eb E Eb 3 equals 3050 minus 2300 2000 BC Middle Bronze MB age equals 2300 2000 minus 1550 BC Early Bronze IV Eb IV Middle Bronze I MBI 2300 2000 BC Middle Bronze IIA also called MB2 equals 2000 to 1800 1750 BC Middle Bronze IIBC3 also called MBII and 3 equals 1800 1750 to 1550 BC Late Bronze LB age equals 1550 to 1200 BC Late Bronze I LBI equals 1550 to 1400 BC Late Bronze IIAB LBIIAB equals 1400 to 1200 BC Iron Age 1200 to 586 BC Iron Ea equals 1200 to 1150 BC Iron Ib equals 1150 to 1000 BC Iron IIA equals 1000 to 925 BC Iron IIB equals 925 to 720 BC 
Iron IIC equals 720 to 586 BC. Babylonian period 586 to 539 BC. Persian period 539 to 332 BC. Hellenistic period equals 332 to 63 BC. Early Hellenistic equals 332 to 198 BC. Late Hellenistic equals 198 to 63 BC. Roman period 63 BC to 324 AD. Topic. History. Topic. The study of biblical archaeology started at the same time as general archaeology and obviously its development relates to the discovery of highly important ancient artifacts. Topic. Stages in the development of biblical archaeology Topic. The development of biblical archaeology has been marked by different periods, Ancient, although archaeology can be considered to be a modern science it should be recognized that many historical authors have left valuable documents that even today are essential reading for students of biblical archaeology. The most important historical sources include Josephus, Origen, Eusebius and the Diary of Egeria. Egeria or Etheria, was a Spanish woman who made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land between 381 and 384. Her diary of the journey, which was a surprisingly adventurous journey for a woman of that time, is a source of study and research even today. Before the British Mandate in Palestine, the first archaeological explorations started in the 19th century initially by Europeans. There were many renowned archaeologists working at this time but one of the best known was Edward Robinson who discovered a number of ancient cities. The Palestine Exploration Fund was created in 1865 with Queen Victoria as its patron. Large investigations were carried out around the temple in Jerusalem in 1867 by Charles Warren and Charles William Wilson, for whom Jerusalem's Wilson's Arch is named. The American Palestine Exploration Society was founded in 1870. In the same year a young French archaeologist, Charles Clermont Gano, arrived in the Holy Land in order to study two notable inscriptions, the Mesha steel in Jordan and inscriptions in the Temple of Jerusalem. Another personality entered the scene in 1890, Sir William Matthew Flinders Petrie, who has become known as the father of Palestine archaeology. In Tel El Hesi, Petrie laid down the basis for methodical exploration by giving a great importance to the analysis of ceramics as archaeological markers. In effect, the recovered objects or fragments serve to fix the chronology with a degree of precision, as pottery was made in different ways and with specific characteristics during each epoch throughout history. In 1889 the Dominican Order opened the French Biblical and Archaeological School of Jerusalem, which would become world-renowned in its field. Such authorities as M. J. Lagrange and L. H. Vincent stand out among the early archaeologists at the school. In 1898, the Deutsche Orient Gesellschaft German Oriental Society was founded in Berlin. A number of its excavations were subsequently funded by Emperor William II of Germany. Many other similar organizations were founded at this time with the objective of furthering this nascent discipline, although the investigations of this epoch had the sole objective of proving the veracity of the biblical stories. During the British Mandate in Palestine 1922 to 1948, the investigation and exploration of the Holy Land increased considerably during this time and was dominated by the genius of William Foxwell Albright, C.S. Fisher, the Jesuits, the Dominicans and many others. This era of great advances and activity closed with a flourish, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran in 1947 and its subsequent excavation, which would in large part be directed by the Frenchman Roland Deveau. After the British Mandate, 1948 marked the start of a new social and political era for the Holy Land with the foundation of the State of Israel and the entrance on the scene of the Israeli archaeologists. Initially their excavations were limited to the territory of the state, but after the Six-Day War they extended into the occupied territories of the West Bank. An important figure in the archaeology of this period was Kathleen Kenyon, who directed the excavations of Jericho and the Ophel of Jerusalem. Crystal Bennett led the excavations at Petra and Amman's citadel, Jabal al Kala. The archaeological museums of the Franciscans and the Dominicans in Jerusalem are particularly notable. 
Biblical archaeology today, 21st century biblical archaeology is often conducted by international teams sponsored by universities and government institutions such as the Israel Antiquities Authority. Volunteers are recruited to participate in excavations conducted by a staff of professionals. Practitioners are making increasing efforts to relate the results of one excavation to others nearby in an attempt to create an ever-widening and increasingly detailed overview of the ancient history and culture of each region. Recent rapid advances in technology have facilitated more scientifically precise measurements in dozens of related fields as well as more timely and more broadly disseminated reports. Topic. Schools of thought in biblical archaeology Topic. Biblical archaeology is the subject of ongoing debate. One of the sources of greatest dispute is the period when kings ruled Israel and more generally the historicity of the Bible. It is possible to define two loose schools of thought regarding these areas, biblical minimalism and maximalism, depending on whether the Bible is considered to be a non-historical, religious document or not. The two schools are not separate units but form a continuum, making it difficult to define different camps and limits. However, it is possible to define points of difference, although these differences seem to be decreasing over time. Topic. Brief summary of important archaeological sites and findings Topic. Topic. Selected discoveries Topic. Detailed lists of objects can be found at the following pages List of artifacts significant to the Bible List of burial places of biblical figures Manuscripts of the Bible, List of Hebrew Bible manuscripts, List of New Testament papyri and List of New Testament uncials List of biblical figures identified in extra-biblical sources Topic. Objects with unknown or disproved biblical origins Topic. Biblical archaeology has also been the target of several celebrated forgeries, which have been perpetrated for a variety of reasons. One of the most celebrated is that of the James Ossuary, when information came to light in 2002 regarding the discovery of an ossuary, with an inscription that said, Jacob, son of Joseph and brother of Jesus. In reality the artifact had been discovered 20 years before, after which it had exchanged hands a number of times and the inscription had been added. This was discovered because it did not correspond to the pattern of the epoch from which it dated. The objects in the following list generally come from private collections and were often purchased in antiques markets. Their authenticity is highly controversial and in some cases they have been proved to be fakes. The Ark of the Covenant there have been a number of claims regarding the Ark's current location. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church claims that it holds the Ark in Aksum, Ethiopia. Local tradition claims that it was brought to Ethiopia by Manelik I with divine assistance, while a forgery was left in the temple in Jerusalem. Objects originating from the Antiques dealer Odid Golan as described above, the Israeli police accused Golan and his accomplices of falsifying the James Ossuary in 2004, they were also accused of falsifying a number of other objects. The Jehoash inscription, which describes repairs to the temple in Jerusalem. It is suspected that the inscription has been falsified onto authentic ancient stones. Various astrakas mentioning the temple or biblical names. A stone candelabra with seven arms, decorated with a menorah from the temple. A stone seal with gold borders that was attributed to King Manasseh of Judah. A quartz plate with an inscription in the ancient Egyptian language stating that King Shishak had captured the ancient city of Megiddo. An ivory pomegranate with the inscription, Property of the Priests of the Temple, carved on an authentic piece of antique ivory. Numerous bullas, including some that mention biblical figures such as the scribe Baruch ben Neria and the prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel. Various groups have claimed to have found Noah's Ark. Many scholars consider that these findings belong to pseudoarchaeology. An Italian creationist group called the Narcas is just one of the many groups that claim to know the exact location of the Ark's remains on the summit of Mount Ararat, on the border between Turkey and Armenia. Photos of the site can be seen at the Narcas website. 
In 2004 an expedition investigated a ridge 19 km from the summit of Mount Ararat, which is believed to be an alternative landing site for the Ark. Samples were submitted to the Geological and Nuclear Sciences Crown Research Institute in Wellington, New Zealand for testing. However, geologists at the Government Institute concluded that the samples were volcanic rock and not petrified wood. Shroud of Turin Critics insist that the linen cloth contains a painting of Jesus made in the Middle Ages. Others maintain that the image was formed by an energetic process that darkened the fibers of the shroud at the moment of resurrection. Radiocarbon dating of some sample material taken from the shroud has been dated to the Middle Ages, but some researchers claim that the samples were taken from a patch that had been re-woven into the shroud's border area during that time period. St. Veronica's Veil A cloth with the face of a man, said to be Jesus by believers, imprinted on it. Believers think that it was the cloth used by Veronica to clean Jesus's face on the Via Dolorosa on the way to Calvary. There are at least six images in existence that bear a marked resemblance to each other and which all claim to be the original veil. Topic. Biblical archaeology and the Catholic Church Topic. The majority of excavations and investigations carried out in the area where the biblical narratives are set mainly have the objective of casting light on the historical, cultural, economic and religious background to the texts, therefore their main objective is not usually proving the veracity of these stories. However, there are some groups that take a more fundamentalist approach and which organize archaeological campaigns with the intention of finding proof that the Bible is factual and that its narratives should be understood as historical events. This is not the position of the official Catholic Church. Archaeological investigations carried out with scientific methods can offer useful data in fixing a chronology that helps to order the biblical stories. In certain cases these investigations can find the place where these narratives took place. In other cases they can confirm the veracity of the stories. However, in other matters they can question events that have been taken as historical fact, providing arguments that show that certain stories are not historical narratives but belong to a different narrative genre. In 1943, Pope Pius XII recommended that interpretations of the scripture take archaeological findings into account in order to discern the literary genres that the scriptures used. The interpreter must, as it were, go back wholly in spirit to those remote centuries of the East and with the aid of history, archaeology, ethnology, and other sciences, accurately determine what modes of writing, so to speak, the authors of that ancient period would be likely to use, and in fact did use. Let those who cultivate biblical studies turn their attention with all due diligence towards this point and let them neglect none of those discoveries, whether in the domain of archaeology or in ancient history or literature, which serve to make better known the mentality of the ancient writers, as well as their manner and art of reasoning, narrating and writing. Since this time archaeology has been considered to provide valuable assistance and as an indispensable tool of the biblical sciences. Expert commentaries Topic. The purpose of biblical archaeology is the clarification and illumination of the biblical text and content through archaeological investigation of the biblical world. Archaeologist William G. Dever contributed to the article on archaeology in the Anchor Bible Dictionary. In this article he reiterates his perceptions of the negative effects of the close relationship that has existed between Syro-Palestinian archaeology and biblical archaeology, which has caused the archaeologists working in this field, particularly the American archaeologists, to resist adoption of the new methods of processual archaeology. In addition he considers that underlying much skepticism in our own field referring to the adaptation of the concepts and methods of a New archaeology. One suspects the assumption, although unexpressed or even unconscious, that ancient Palestine, especially Israel during the biblical period, was unique in some superhistorical way that was not governed by the normal principles of cultural evolution. Dever found that Syro-Palestinian archaeology had been treated in American institutions as a sub-discipline of Bible studies, where it was expected that American archaeologists would try to provide valid historical evidence of episodes from the biblical tradition." According to Dever, 
The most naive idea regarding Syro-Palestinian archaeology is that the reason and purpose of biblical archaeology and, by extrapolation, of Syro-Palestinian archaeology is simply to elucidate facts regarding the Bible and the Holy Land. Dever has also written that archaeology certainly doesn t prove literal readings of the Bible. It calls them into question, and that s what bothers some people. Most people really think that archaeology is out there to prove the Bible. No archaeologist thinks so. From the beginnings of what we call biblical archaeology, perhaps 150 years ago, scholars, mostly Western scholars, have attempted to use archaeological data to prove the Bible. And for a long time it was thought to work. William Albright, the great father of our discipline, often spoke of the archaeological revolution. Well, the revolution has come but not in the way that Albright thought. The truth of the matter today is that archaeology raises more questions about the historicity of the Hebrew Bible and even the New Testament than it provides answers, and that's very disturbing to some people. Dever also wrote, Archaeology as it is practiced today must be able to challenge, as well as confirm, the Bible stories. Some things described there really did happen, but others did not. The biblical narratives about Abraham, Moses, Joshua and Solomon probably reflect some historical memories of people and places, but the larger-than-life portraits of the Bible are unrealistic and contradicted by the archaeological evidence. I am not reading the Bible as scripture. I am in fact not even a theist. My view all along, and especially in the recent books, is first that the biblical narratives are indeed stories often fictional and almost always propagandistic, but that here and there they contain some valid historical information. Tel Aviv University archaeologist Ziev Herzog wrote in the Haaretz newspaper, This is what archaeologists have learned from their excavations in the land of Israel. The Israelites were never in Egypt, did not wander in the desert, did not conquer the land in a military campaign and did not pass it on to the twelve tribes of Israel. Perhaps even harder to swallow is that the united monarchy of David and Solomon, which is described by the Bible as a regional power, was at most a small tribal kingdom. And it will come as an unpleasant shock to many that the God of Israel, YHWH, had a female consort and that the early Israelite religion adopted monotheism only in the waning period of the monarchy and not at Mount Sinai. Professor Finkelstein told the Jerusalem Post that Jewish archaeologists have found no historical or archaeological evidence to back the biblical narrative on the Exodus, the Jews' wandering in Sinai or Joshua's conquest of Canaan. On the alleged Temple of Solomon, Finkelstein said that there is no archaeological evidence to prove it really existed. Professor Yoni Mizrahi, an independent archaeologist, agreed with Israel Finkelstein, regarding the exodus of Israelites from Egypt, Egyptian archaeologist Zahi Hawass said, Really, it's a myth. This is my career as an archaeologist. I should tell them the truth. If the people are upset, that is not my problem. Conservative scholars dispute these claims. In his 2001 book The Old Testament Documents, Are They Reliable and Relevant? Evangelical Old Testament scholar Walter C. Kaiser Jr. included a chapter entitled, Does Archaeology Help the Case for Reliability? Kaiser states, T. He study of archaeology has helped illuminate the Bible by casting light on its historical and cultural location. With increasing clarity, the setting of the Bible appears more vividly within the framework of general history. By fitting biblical history, persons, and events into general history, archaeology has demonstrated the validity of many biblical references and data. It has continued to cast light, whether implicitly or explicitly, on many of the Bible's customs, cultures, and settings during various periods of history. On the other hand, archaeology has also given rise to some real problems with regard to its findings. Thus, its work is an ongoing one that cannot be foreclosed too quickly or used merely as a confirming device. Kaiser goes on to detail case after case in which the Bible, he says, has aided in the identification of missing persons, missing peoples, missing customs and settings. He concludes, this is not to say that archaeology is a cure-all for all the challenges brought to the text it is not. There are some monstrous problems that remain some created by the archaeological data itself. 
but since we have seen so many specific challenges over the years yield to such specific data in favor of the text, a presumption tends to build that we should go with the text until definite contrary information is available. This methodology that says that the text is innocent until proven guilty is not only recommended as a good procedure for American jurisprudence, but it is recommended in the area of examining the claims of the scripture as well. Topic excavations and surveys topic The following is a summary of important excavations and surveys. Topic see also topic topic References topic topic Source topic Walter C. Kaiser, Jr., The Old Testament Documents, Are They Reliable and Relevant? Downers Grove, Ill, Intervarsity Press, 2001, 97-108. The Anchor Bible Dictionary, Archaeology, by William Dever. Topic further reading topic William F. Albright, From the Stone Age to Christianity Baltimore, Johns Hopkins University Press, 1940 Anati e Palestine before the Hebrews, A History, From the Earliest Arrival of Man to the Conquest of Canaan New York, Alfred A. Knopf, 1963 Ashmore, W. and Scherer, R. J., Discovering Our Past, A Brief Introduction to Archaeology New York, McGraw-Hill, 2013 ISBN 0-7674-1196-X. This has also been used as a source. Blakelock, E. M., and R. K. Harrison, E. D. S. The New International Dictionary of Biblical Archaeology Grand Rapids, Mish, Zondervan Publishing House, 1983. Chapman, and J. N. Tubb, Archaeology and the Bible British Museum, 1990. Kornfeld, G., and D. N. Friedman, Archaeology of the Bible Book by Book New York, Harper and Rowe, 1989. Davies, P. R., In Search of Ancient Israel, A Study in Biblical Origins, Sheffield, J. S. O. T. Press, 1992, Davis, Thomas, Shifting Sands, The Rise and Fall of Biblical Archaeology New York, Oxford University Press, 2004. Dever, William G., Archaeology and the Bible, Understanding Their Special Relationship, in Biblical Archaeology Review 16-3, May, June 1990 Dever, William G., 2002. What Did the Biblical Writers Know and When Did They Know It? W. M. B. Eerdmans Publishing Company. ISBN 0-8028-2126-X. Dever, William G., 2003. Who Were the Early Israelites and Where Did They Come From? W. M. B. Eerdmans Publishing Company. ISBN 0-8028-0975-8. Finkelstein, Israel, Silberman, Neil Asher 2001, The Bible Unearthed, Archaeology's New Vision of Ancient Israel and the Origin of Its Sacred Texts, New York, Simon & Schuster, ISBN 0-7432-2338-1. Friend, William Hugh Clifford, The Archaeology of Early Christianity. A History, Jeffrey Chapman, 1997. ISBN 0-225-66850-5 Frericks, Ernest S. and Leonard H. Lesko eds. Exodus, The Egyptian Evidence. Winona Lake, Eisenbrowns, 1997 ISBN 1-57506-025-6 Denver Seminary Review Halevi, Masha, Between Faith and Science, Franciscan Archaeology in the Service of the Holy Places, Middle Eastern Studies, Vol. 48, Issue 2, 2012, pp. 249-267. Hallett, R. Bible, Map and Spade, The American Palestine Exploration Society, Frederick Jones Bliss and the Forgotten Story of Early American Biblical Archaeology, Gorgeous Press, 2006, discusses American involvement in biblical archaeology before 1900. Caffel, A. October 29, 1999. Deconstructing the Walls of Jericho. Haaretz. Keller, Werner, The Bible as History, 1955. Lance, H. D. The Old Testament and the Archaeologist. London, 1983 Mancini, Ignazio. Archaeological Discoveries Relative to the Judeo-Christians, Historical Survey, Trans. From Italian by G. Bushnell as updated by the author. In series, publications of the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum, Collectio Minor, No. 10. Jerusalem, Franciscan Printing Press, 1970. Without ISBN or SBN Mazar, A. Archaeology of the Land of the Bible The Anchor Bible Reference Library, 1990 Mykitjik, Lawrence J. 2004. Identifying Biblical Persons in Northwest Semitic Inscriptions of 1200-539 BCE. SBL Academia Biblica Series, No. 12. Atlanta, Georgia, Society of Biblical Literature. 
Mykitiak, Lawrence J. 2009, Corrections and Updates to Identifying Biblical Persons in Northwest Semitic Inscriptions of 1200–539 BCE, Marv 16 over 1, pp. 49–132. Negev, Avraham, and Gibson, Shimon, eds. 2003. Archaeological Encyclopedia of the Holy Land. New York, New York, The Continuum International Publishing Group, CS1 maint, uses editor's parameter link Newman, Thomas W. and Robert M. Sanford, Practicing Archaeology, a training manual for cultural resources Archaeology Roman and Littlefield Pub Inc., August, 2001, hardcover, 450 pages, ISBN 0-7591-0094-2 Ramsey, George W. The Quest for the Historical Israel. London 1982, Renfrew, Colin & Bond, Paul G., Archaeology, Theories, Methods and Practice, Thames & Hudson, 4th edition, 2004. ISBN 0-500-28441-5 Robinson, Edward 1856, Biblical Researches in Palestine, 1838-52, Boston, Massachusetts, Crocker & Brewster. Chauvel, Keith N. Biblical Archaeology in Focus. Baker Publishing Group, 1978. Sanford, Robert M. and Thomas W. Newman, Cultural Resources Archaeology, An Introduction, Roman and Littlefield Pub Inc., December, 2001, Trade Paperback, 256 pages, ISBN 0-7591-0095-0 Thompson, J. A., The Bible and Archaeology, Revised Edition, 1973, Trigger, Bruce, 1990. A History of Archaeological Thought. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-33818-2 Wright, G. Ernest, Biblical Archaeology. Philadelphia, Westminster, 1962. Yamauchi, E. The Stones and the Scriptures. London, IVP, 1973. Topic external links Topic Pontificio Istituto di Archaeologia Cristiana. Archaeology in Popular Culture Anthropology Resources on the Internet, Anthropology Resources on the Internet, a web directory with over 3,000 links grouped in specialized topics. Archaeology Magazine published by the Archaeological Institute of America Archaeology Directory, Directory of Archaeological Topics on the Web. The 2003 Iraq War and Archaeology Information about Looting in Iraq. The Biblical Pseudo-Archaeologists Pillaging the West Bank Excavation Sites Archaeological Work and Volunteer Pages. Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Christian Archaeology. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company.